The patsy Stephen Paddock got a pap smear on President's Day from his pediatrician. Hi there, folks. Patrick here, and I'm just testing out the pop screen on my new microphone, which is brought to you by viewers like yourself. Because without you and your donations, with the recent demonetization of YouTube and the censorship occurring right now, this quality sound would not be possible. So I want to personally thank all of my patrons on my Patreon account. What is up guys? Patrick back with another video. And as you can see, today I have leaped into the 20th century with modern day studio recording equipment. And this could not be possible without the cool people out there who have supported me on Patreon and uh, all of the people who came on to my video and complained about the audio quality, who never donated anything, well, this is not for you. This is only for the people who actually put up or shut up. So um, now that that's out of the way, today's video, I'm going to be talking about another fine MGTOW topic, uh, something very important, something I've dealt with my entire life when it comes to dating or simping, uh, whatever you want to call it, whatever they call it these days. And the topic is, her family hates you, okay? And I am going to give some personal experiences as well as just sort of the overall bigger picture of what you have to deal with as a man in today's Western, feminized, gynocentrized, it's not even a word, but I just made it one, world, all right? So I have noticed in my own experience Okay, life is about ups and downs. Um, in my MGTOW Business 101 video, I, I'm pretty sure I talk about how it's feast or famine at times, right? Sometimes you go through droughts. Sometimes you go through rainy seasons. Sometimes you have more money than you know what to do with. Sometimes, you know, you have to jack off the dog just to feed the cat. But what you have to be aware of as a man is that your woman, whether she will acknowledge this consciously or not, and therefore by extension her family and friends, uh, they expect you to be, uh, you know, Bill Gates for all times. They expect you to be, you know, uh, Floyd Mayweather for all occasions. Um, they expect you to be Oprah, you know, when, when they're sobbing uh, about some bullshit that is obviously stupid. And so you're expected, and, and you're expected to put your feelings, your dreams, your cares, your concerns on the back burner at all times. As a man, that's what being a man is all about. So when I have dated women, I don't think I have ever dated one woman where her family did not hate me. And I used to think it was, it was me, it was my fault, it was bad. Um, but, but it was only until I was outside of the relationship, meaning it was over, that I was actually able to see the truth for what it completely was. See, I remember, I remember going to uh, the girl I was dating, her, uh, her brother's house, I believe it was on the night before, on the night before Thanksgiving. And um, I had just gotten off work um, at, at a restaurant because I worked at restaurants before I became self-employed and owned my own business, which allows me to do whatever the flip I want all day now. Um, and I had gone uh, over to her brother's house and her whole family was there and I showed up in my attire from work because I went there directly after work. And I remember I walked in the door and I was very polite, you know, very gracious, very grateful, looking forward to maybe having a few snacks, <laughs> maybe a few drinks, and uh, just relaxing and um, unwinding with, with the girl I was banging, excuse me, with the girl I was in love with. And, um, and as soon as I walk in the door, her brother, who was a lawyer, uh, a patent lawyer, okay, not a trial lawyer, not a real lawyer, uh, a patent lawyer, you know, <laughs> a Googler <laughs> with a law degree, um, looks at me and sort of like laughs at me, like mocks me. 
And and mind you, uh, literally th- two weeks later, I would get a phone call from an agent in Los Angeles saying uh, one of my instrumentals got picked up by MTV. So here I am working hard, busting my ass on the night before Thanksgiving, not complaining about it, uh, working in a restaurant, upscale casual slash fine dining, and I show up to the house and immediately I'm, I'm met with, uh, you know, condescension and uh, people looking down on me and, and like basically making fun of me. And you know, that does not sit right when, when maybe you have uh, respect for others and they don't have respect for you, but okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, get to the point I'm making. And that is, as a man, even if you're a hard worker with dreams, accomplishing, succeeding, you're uh, you know, going outside your own box, your own uh, comfort thresholds, you are going to be met with the ultimate simp experience, okay? And the simp spectrum ranges from your feminist leaning uh, love interest, which, you know, it has been established well within the shadow of a doubt in all these MGTOW videos that whether or not a woman is a bleached hair, uh, flannel wearing lumberjack feminazi, she still benefits from feminism in a, in a sense that she's still sort of, um, you know, riding the coattails of the modern feminist craze. And she gets to enjoy the fact that she gets handed things for free that she can have uh, less accountability in the world. So her family is no different, okay? And her family is gonna look down on you um, if you are not also part of the simp, um, you know, simp society, if you will. And, and, so, and so just to talk about this girl I was, I was seeing, her brother, uh, you know, a patent lawyer, um, married to another lawyer who he met in school. Ooh, wow, really risky, right? Really adventurous. Who he basically had cheated on to meet. He met her and started cheating with her on his first wife with whom he had his kids. All right? And, uh, and, and so he lived in a house with something like four or five of his kids and, and his new wife, which was also uh, a lawyer at the same firm. Same firm, same school. Woo! <laughs> you really... <laughs> You're really Indiana Jones, aren't you? You're really, you're really adventurous. Um, <laughs> so it's, you know, and in a house that's probably intended for for only one or two children, a small family home. But this is California, so you know everything is god awfully expensive. Laughing at me, okay? Guy probably pays, you know, a significant amount of his earnings in taxes. Doesn't even make that much. Probably makes six figures. But it's not like a super comfortable six figures when you consider all of his uh, required costs, payments, and taxes. Okay, laughing at me, and then three or four years later, I'm fully self-employed and can do what I want all day, and he's still a slave to the system. He's still a slave uh, to the fact that he is in a, a provider role, but not just a provider role, also in a good, a good son role, right, which is really nothing more than being a mindless follower to whatever your parents have dictated, whatever your current female has dictated, uh, and, and just sort of the uh, prevailing trends, right, of, your, of, of what people consider normal and are constantly spreading as normal on, say, Facebook and Twatter and all those other, you know, BS institutions that people have accepted without question. So, Okay, enough about her brother. So yeah, you know, I think every relationship I've ever been with, ever been in, uh, you know, the brother has always hated me. And I've never done anything against them. I have never disrespected them. I go to the table with a neutral attitude of respect. And that is, I'm going to be neutral or positive until someone disrespects me. Now let's go to the parents. Okay, so then you have the parents who are also uh, enjoying the simpitude, uh, Simp City, um, the simps computer game. 
and um, you know, and they are reveling and basking in their grandchildren on this Thanksgiving occasion in this crowded house that is being, you know, that is uh, <laughs> overpriced, right? Overpriced, and the value is not there. And here they are, thinking they're crushing it, and 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 they actually rent a house because you know real estate costs so much. And of course, they're looking down on me also because I work in a restaurant and I'm not from California. And, you know, endless list of arbitrary, nonsensical reasons to hate somebody, to hate a man like myself going his own way early stages without even knowing it, you know, getting little, uh, little samples of the red pill here and there in his daily routine. And so now you have the parents who think, oh, well, they have sort of somewhat control and influence over their son, who, by the way, the girl I dated constantly complained that would never pay for dinner whenever the family would go out and bring all those kids, okay? The, fam the parents who rented a house, a small house, always paid for dinner, and the guy always ducked out on the bill. So here you have people sort of using each other uh, and yet looking down on me and I rarely see them, and I'm constantly working hard, trying to find a better job, supporting myself, and making music at the same time, and building a business on the side at the same time, which would, of course, lead to my eventual financial freedom. Maybe not overwhelming wealth, but freedom to do what I want all day, and enough money to pay my bills. And if, even if I wanted to, probably to get married and start a family uh, comfortably at one time. Maybe not right now, but uh, that's, not my, that's not my goal. So, so now the family looks down on me, and let's, let's examine her family, okay? Her family, uh, both of them work, okay, both of them are actually uh, immigrants, legal immigrants to the country. They worked for Bank of America, you know, that good, honest organization that never required a taxpayer bailout in 2008, you know, the U.S. Treasury Secretary never threatened Congress with martial law if he didn't get his bailout. No, that never happened. So you have these simps, okay, these, these white knights, uh, blue pillars who worked for Bank of America, you know, after they came to America, when back in the day all you had to do was have a pulse and not be a rapist, or at least not be a convicted rapist to get a job. And if you had a college degree, holy fuck, you were like... You know, I don't know, like college, some college education 40 years ago is like having a, a master's degree or a, or a doctorate today. Because um, now you have people with bachelor's degrees who can't even get good jobs, uh, like myself, you know, and have to go um, slave in a kitchen or a restaurant somewhere, which I don't even mind. I liked, I liked waiting tables when I did it. It was a challenge and it made me a better business person for today. No shame. I believe that all uh, productive, honest work is something to be celebrated and appreciated. So these people worked for Bank of America, you know, in these simple little jobs for comfortable, cozy corporate America. You know, so they come from an entirely different mindset. They're not entrepreneurial. Uh, they they still have this mindset of, oh, you go to college, you get a degree, and automatically you get a good job. Um, and then you work your nine to five, and then you have plenty of money, and uh, you, you know you have a family, and you, you know, you follow orders like a good soldier. And you know, and you, you do everything your parents expect of you. And that just doesn't work for MGTOW guys, right? That doesn't work for me. I want more out of life than just to be a slave at some job. And even when I tried to be a slave at a job, the supervisor was always a douchebag who had some like hidden contempt, jealousy, hatred for me. Uh, no matter how cool or productive or nice I was, it was always like they were constantly trying to hit me with some like put down, uh, try to tell me my work was not good enough. If I finished my work early, it was Oh, that's too bad. Well, let's try and find you some more work to do. <laughs> okay. Like now when I finish my work for the day, I can chill. I can drink a beer. I can go work out. Or I don't even have to work every day. And um, 
I think it's a, just a little bit more meaningful and conducive to raising kids in a family. If I wanted that, then say, you know, spending three hours in traffic a day, uh, you know, going to work so I can be shit on. And, you know, and then of course the wife now has to work too, right? Because just to barely be able to afford a house, now you have to have two parents working. Then your kids go to daycare or the state controlled public school system and they become brainwashed little turds. Uh, all the while your parents or her parents, you know, sit on some type of unstable stock market and, and you know, their basket of, of quote unquote value stocks, which yes, they will crash in a stock market crash as well. So you have, you have maximum blue pillory going on. You have their parents hating you, but are they really that concerned with their own flesh and blood family members, even though they're hating you, even though because you don't fall in line, even because you're a, uh, a round peg in a square hole, you know, and their little cookie cutter bullshit, you know, view of the world, are they holding their own family members to those same standards? If they're letting the guy who's the lawyer not pay for dinner whenever they go out as a family and he brings his whole tribe of douchebags with him? Are they holding their flesh and blood to the same standard when, you know, they, they allow their other daughter who had uh, two, who, two kids to move back home after either her first marriage or boyfriend who is the, the baby daddy didn't work out um, and so now they are essentially parents too. Again, raising kids in a small ass rented house where uh, the girl you're dating, her sister, lives, and they're worried that she's an alcoholic now. Uh, but hey, she has a nine to five cookie cutter job too, so that must give her some kind of pass. Are they giving that same leniency to their flesh and blood? Uh, nephews and nieces who are meth heads, okay? And I'm talking about the same situation, the same story, the same family here. You know, their, their, their brother or sister whose child, i.e. the cousin of the girl you're dating, is a full-blown meth head. I'm talking about with the, the itchy, scratchy, you know, face marks, the unreliable work history, uh, the lack of prospects, the lack of um, proactive desire to achieve anything. Active meth head. Are they having the same leniency on that family member when that meth head's parent is putting undue pressure on the girl you're dating because she is actually a, a good worker, um, a good you know, worker in the workforce and uh, has built up a resume of reliability and dependability and that, and the mother of that meth head is pressuring the girl you're seeing to write a letter of recommendation and be a active professional reference for said meth head who cannot get his life together. Okay. Wow. Did I, as a waiter of tables or a food runner in a restaurant, <laughs> ever do methamphetamines and then require that my girlfriend at the time cover for me and lie to employers and say that I'm some great worker and reliable? No. Did her own flesh and blood family? Yes. <laughs> so you have basically these, these families, okay, who expect you to be Captain Blue Pill. And they are their families are shit themselves, okay? The kids they're raising are little shithead snobs. Uh, their brother can't pay for dinner, and he's, a, he's freeloading off his parents and to a large degree and leveraging the fact that grandparents love their grandchildren to basically extort free meals and free babysitting and everything else free. The same guy who won't watch your girl's dog if you want to go out of uh, you know town for the weekend, and they have a backyard and... The dog is small and insignificant in the grand scheme of things. Oh, no, no, no. You know, they're meth family members, meth heads, trying to pressure your girl to 
cover for them and ruin her own professional reputation or just her own ethics and personal morals. No, 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 they hate you because you wait tables and you're writing music trying to uh, follow dreams. You know, people who have not moved <laughs> more than <laughs> more than <laughs> eight miles away from each other or from where they grew up, okay, are hating on you for taking risks in life. And hey, look, okay, whatever. Uh, I'm not Mark Zucker Jew. I don't own my own billion dollar app, okay? <laughs> but I am self-employed. And, and on, in my own mind and heart, I made it to a large degree. And it wasn't by following the herd. It wasn't by continuing to pop blue pills every day. So when you go on the internet and you read all these articles by these PhDs, which is really just, you know, um, the D in PhD stands for douchebag, all these psychologists, you know, basically communists. And remember, the Soviet Union was big on psychology before it absolutely collapsed, okay? You had a bunch of, you know, the word Soviet means to counsel, okay? And when you have a society full of counselors, i.e. people who don't do shit, but they have the fucking answer for everything, all right, this is what you get. You're gonna, you, go ahead and look up on the internet, uh, you know, all this great advice on my, my girlfriend's family hates me, what can I do about it? And you'll get lots of PhD douchebag males on there going, well, well, have you asked her how she feels? And, you know, go to her and ask her what you should do. And it's like, yeah, that's a, that's a really great idea. That's like asking a woman what she finds attractive in a man um, when deep down uh, you're going to have to figure that out <laughs> or face a life uh, of heartache and heartbreak. Um, or you're going to encounter these, uh, these mother hens on the web who are no doubt alone, bitter, angry, or they have some simp husband um, who probably has serious medical conditions because he's secretly wanting to die. Who, and you know, I, I, I will never get over this. I see, on, I see on the web, you have these guys who, who go on these forums and they ask these questions like, I have this girl I'm really in love with, I care about so much, and she has a family who hates me, this, that, and the other. Her friends hate me, yada, yada, what should I do? And then you have these scumbag cunts who go on there, and they're probably usually older too. A lot of them are older. And they immediately blame the guy. Like, well, maybe you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing. You know, but they always sneak it in. They always sneak it in like the, the end of the first paragraph or the second or third paragraph. So it's like, it's like they start out with this fake willingness to help and be faux objective. And then they start slipping in this, this guilting and blame and accusation because again, they know, okay, they know that they are the paper tiger. They know that they are the facade. They know that they are collectively ganging up on you, the man who's just trying to make sense of the world to justify this scummy, cunt bag, blue pill, blue pill behavior out there of most modern day Western women and their families and everyone else who aligns with them. Now, of course, the simple answer is to say, well, her family is just being, a, you know, douchebags to you because they're trying to protect her. But my, the whole point of my video today is to show you that what they are really doing is they are following an unconscious script. Family is the OG government structure, okay? Original gangster, all right? The family unit is the original government. That's why today's modern day massive state government wants to destroy the family. But, okay, putting all that aside, families are still capable of massive corruption uh, and rotting from within themselves, especially when they're trying to keep up with the Joneses and they're trying to compete with other people. And somebody made a great statement uh, on one of the comments of my previous videos, and that is, uh, I'll paraphrase, I'll paraphrase, and that is that people, the regular blue pill people of the world wade through shit their entire life and deal with shit their entire life and swim through shit their entire life and then by the time they're old, 
they wonder why they're shitty people. <laughs> so whoever, whoever you are who wrote that, okay, amazing. And that is so true. And as a MGTOW man, you know, maybe you're done with women completely, whatever. I'm not here to tell you you should never go back with a woman or if you find, if you find a better situation and you want to have kids, a family, love interest, whatever. I personally believe I am an I am an uh, an AWALT man. Okay, all women are like that. It's just a matter of degree and spectrum. 